Upon a midnight dreary, as I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten form, as I nodded, sometimes fapping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my one-bedroom apartment door. "'Tis the hooker," I muttered. I called from back page two hours before. "'Tis the hooker and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember. "'Twas in the bleak last night, and my limp and placid member had wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my porn, surcease of sorrow, sorrow for my lost Lenore, for that skank and worthless bitch who'd left me a week before, a skank forevermore. And each silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each cum-filled tissue thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my hand, I stood repeating, "'Tis a prostitute entreating entrance at my apartment door, a prostitute entreating entrance at my apartment door, only this and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was fapping, and so quietly you came rapping, and so gently you came tapping, tapping at my apartment door that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, a midget there, nothing more. Deep into her eyes, long I stood there peering, wondering, doubting, fearing, dreaming dreams no mortal man has ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only words there spoken were the whispered words. Are you the whore? This I whispered, and the midget murmured back the words, Don't call me whore, only this and nothing more. Back into my apartment turning, all my lust within me burning, soon again I started fapping, somewhat harder than before. Surely, said I, surely tis money under my bedroom mattress. Let me see how much their merit is. And this prostitute explore. Let me pay this tiny hooker and her services explore. Sixty dollars there, not a penny more. And then this ebony gal beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance she bore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, said I, I'll show no craven, ghastly quim unshaven like the eighties any more. And tell me what thy hourly rate is on this night's womantonian shore. Quoth the hooker, forty more. Much I marveled to hear this ungainly gal discourse so plainly, though her answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For surely we can't help agreeing that no living human beings ever yet been cursed with paying full price for only half a whore. A hundred dollars for a hooker barely two foot four? Alas, I had not the forty more. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome.